To solve linear systems, our goal is going to be to decompose or decouple them. This is difficult in general. We're going to work piece by piece using a special tool from linear algebra. This is called the Jordan canonical form. It's very cool, very powerful. You may have seen this in linear algebra. I hope so, but if not, here's a preview of what you will learn for real when you take it for real. Here's the goal. Given a square matrix A, I want to diagonalize it as much as possible. I say as much as possible because it is impossible in general, even as we saw back in volume two with a two by two matrix. But as we did back then, we can get it as close as possible by a well-chosen coordinate change using a matrix V of eigenvectors and generalized eigenvectors. We can take our matrix A and rewrite it as V, J, V inverse, where J is the Jordan form. It is the matrix that is as close to being diagonal as possible. And V is, again, a coordinate change matrix whose columns are generalized eigenvectors of A. Now, for the most part, we're going to be ignoring that matrix V and how to compute it. And we're going to focus on that matrix J, the Jordan form. Now, here's the idea. J is not a diagonal matrix in general, but it is block diagonal. That means that we can write this matrix J as a diagonal matrix where each of the entries in this matrix is itself a matrix. And all of those terms along the diagonal, J1, J2, all the way up through JM, are square matrices. Everything else is filled in by matrices, all zeros. I'm just going to call those guys zero. Now, why are we doing this? Why do we want to do this? Why is a block diagonal matrix so good? It's good because it decouples the variables as much as possible. It decouples the system. Here's the idea. If we have a block diagonal matrix J and we want to compute powers of it, then J to the N is going to be the block diagonal matrix with the same pattern of zeros, but along the diagonals, you have powers of the diagonal blocks. You have J1 to the N, J2 to the N, all the way down the line. That is really nice. That's something you can verify just by taking examples of block diagonal matrices, multiplying them together, seeing, oh yes, they fit that pattern. The same thing holds with matrix exponentials. For a block diagonal matrix J, E to the JT is going to be the block diagonal matrix with the same pattern, each diagonal block being the exponential E to the J sub I times T. That's why we want this block diagonal Jordan form. Now, the interesting question are, what are these diagonal blocks in the Jordan form? Here is the simple version of it. It's kind of complex, but kind of not complex. Here it goes. Each Jordan block, J sub I, is of the following form. It's a square matrix with lambdas all along the diagonal and one on the super diagonal just above it, and then zeros everywhere else. Now the size of this block is going to be the multiplicity of this eigenvalue lambda, where we distinguish based on eigenvectors. So each block has a repeated lambda eigenvalue with just one eigenvector, one independent eigenvector for that. Now, this is where all those generalized eigenvectors come from. You need to build up a bunch of those. We're not going to go there. The important thing is that each of these blocks has a single eigenvalue and a single eigenvector associated to it. Is this hard? No, it's not hard. You just have to be a little bit careful. Here's a simple example. Let's say that we have the following Jordan form J, where I'm just writing out the diagonal blocks with the non-zero terms in them, you can see that I've got one, two, three, four, five blocks. And this is kind of interesting in that all the blocks are one by one. That's totally allowed if you have an independent eigenvalue with an independent eigenvector. But I've got one two by two block. 
and that matrix is 2, 0, 1, 2. So 2 is along the diagonal, 1 on that super diagonal. Now notice the eigenvalue in that 2 by 2 block equals 2, the same as the previous block. So this eigenvalue lambda equals 2 has, in a sense, multiplicity 3, but there are only two independent eigenvectors. One of them goes with the first eigenvalue, the second one goes with this pair of eigenvalues. And this is why you have to be careful. You need to know which eigenvalues have independent eigenvectors and which do not, and that is what contributes to this block structure. Now this is a simple example, and this is the simple story where we're presenting the Jordan canonical form over the field of complex numbers, if you will. It's going to get a little more difficult when we actually get to complex eigenvalues, because we do prefer real coordinates when we're working with dynamical systems. So stay tuned. We're going to stick with the reals for the moment. When we turn to complex eigenvalues, things are going to get a little more complicated.